Hello and welcome, my name is Meepolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are wrapping up a series I have tried to finish several times, namely My Love Story by Kazune Kawahara and Aruko. I should start out by reassuring viewers that the fact that it took me multiple times to finish this series is not a reflection on its quality, just of my ADHD brain dealing with a busy, busy world. If you haven't already, I would certainly recommend you check out my initial series thoughts. And because I did start reading this so long ago, I did a standalone review of the volume two as well. As far as warnings go, I have now confirmed that this series is pretty innocent. There is w one random plot that I did not appreciate that involves Takao dressing up as a cop to patrol Rinko's all girls school school fair for perverts. Good intentions, still propaganda. There's also a very brief idea that maybe Takao's mom's pregnancy might not go well, but this is resolved in a page or two. Also, I think there's a background age gap briefly touched on. My mind just might be fabricating things though, and I don't have the early volume still with me to check. There are, are a couple instances of toxic male hetero behavior that Takao gets to save a few apparently cis women from. As a shoujo series, with the couple getting together at the start, as we progressed through the 13 volumes, it felt like the someone else has a crush on either Takao or Rinko recurred a couple times too many. Of course, since I did have to read some of the middle volumes more than once, maybe my feelings are exaggerated. That said, Rinko and Takao continue through in a way that I think demonstrates some really good relationship qualities. Both parties can have interesting hobbies that sometimes take them away from each other, and they never get dragged down into toxic jealousy. I also appreciate the role that tender male friendship also played in the series between Takao and Sunakawa, and how the series felt largely from Takao's point of view. Sometimes it felt a bit odd how Takao and Rinko are the one couple that gets any real airtime, but I am ultimately glad that Sunakawa kept to his romantically loner self, as that did ultimately end up being very nice. Sometimes having multiple couples in a series, most of the more side characters merge together in my mind. Besides these relationships, which I did enjoy, putting romance and friendship as equally important, I was a bit disappointed that there was no obvious queer characters. Not entirely unusual, I guess this story just made me feel like there should have been some and that would have been handled well, but perhaps that's just my imagination. But yeah, this being a series limited to cis hetero romance like that, I did finish this series still feeling like the way that Kawahara depicts gender breaks nicely with convention. A series that avoids sexual content, it is always Rinko who wants them to be more intimate. Not in a way that she forces Takao, but with him being such a large noble guy, he feels like any intimacy he would initiate would be bad. The poor dear. At more than one occasion, I wanted to sit the boy down and give him a good talking to about the idea of consent. And each of Takao's and Sunakawa's parents also had very nice traditional, but also n very not traditional dynamics going. Otherwise, I did not notice any eng engagement with issues of class, race, or disability. Overall, I rated most of the books in this series as three out of five stars, with the first and last being four out of five stars, because yes, the build up to the end really excited me. And not just because I hardly ever actually finish series. <laughs> My bias going into the series is that as a very tall child with undiagnosed ADHD, I felt a very strong kinship with Takao, and I'm always a fan in hetero romances for the woman to own their sexual agency. Buy it all and keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13, also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.